Hello again, Blair here of Chaos Costumes, and I'm here to teach you a technique that I use quite often in Nomad Sculpt. You would be surprised how easy it is. So without further ado, let's go. Today's lesson is going to be about a very specific tool called the stamp tool. I use it quite frequently to elevate my sculptures. How you select textures is over here in this menu, which I typically use. I have a but ton of textures that I've made and I haven't purchased a single one of them because I'm a cheap bastard. But you'll be able to make textures like this really easily. It's very important if you are 3D printing fancy things. So how we're gonna make textures is we're gonna go into Procreate. You'll want your background color to be black. It's a lot easier to select pure black in this classic menu. First, we're gonna start out with the easiest texture and I have made a lot of textures using just the brushes in Procreate so here we're gonna make some old skin texture. All you have to do is just sketch in a little dot, right? And make it bigger and you're done. You have a skin alpha stamp. We'll export that as a PNG and save to photos. Let's swing back into Nomad and I'll show you how to use it. So down here, you wanna click import, photos, and then the thing you just made. Now it's ready to use. The size really doesn't matter as much as the intensity, but right now things are a little lumpy. You can voxel remesh it. And you can also use dynamic topology. The same gist, you want the mesh pretty dense. And you want to make sure to turn off symmetry if you're right in the middle. Since the skin texture is the way it is, I'm going to invert it. This is what dynamic topology does, but it does lag quite a bit. We're going to go in and voxel remesh it, and I will show you what that does. Once again, you want it really dense. So this is the texture we get with voxel remeshing. And I'll turn down the intensity a little bit, and you can really get in some really nice textures that you definitely can't sculpt. Now we're gonna make a new texture, which we're gonna actually rip it from a photo. I saved this bark image from Wikipedia. And what we're gonna do is use the airbrush to erase around the edges so it's nice and soft. There's a way to soften edges within Nomad, but we're going to do it manually here. And then I reduce the opacity just to keep softening those edges once I get the shape down. Now that I have it the size that I want, I'm going to try and fill up the square, but not too far so those feathered edges aren't interrupted. Now I'm going to decrease the saturation so it's black and white, then reduce the opacity a little bit. Ideally you want to Gaussian blur a smidge just so your edges aren't as sharp when you stamp it onto a surface. And uh, now we're done, believe it or not. Let's save this as a PNG and swing this into Nomad. How you organize files like this is you go into the directory in your machine, whatever it is, and then you can put stuff into folders, but you can't do it internally inside of Nomad. So let's import our bark texture. And it's very subtle because the last one we did is really subtle. So let's turn up the intensity and turn off the subtract. And now you can really see it. One thing you really want to pay attention to is that when your sculpture is thinner or it has corners, you want to turn on the filter of front-facing vertexes only because what you see back here is it's stamping all the way through. So if we turn on front-facing vertex only and swing around to what we see and stamp as big as we can, it won't stamp behind it. The next texture I'm going to show you is how to make fur. So I'm going to go in with the inking technical pen and just draw lines. Now that I'm happy with my lines, I'll duplicate that layer a couple times. And then we're going to Gaussian blur them into almost a gradient. The brightest white will be the highest point and it will fade into black. Now to sharpen these edges, I will go in with the marquee freehand and just trace out where I will want the fur. Now I'll invert that selection and I'll just cut out the outside by swiping down with three fingers and hitting cut. It looks real messy right now, but we're going to Gaussian blur that and clean it up. Now that's ready to export and swing into Nomad. So once again, we'll import it and test it out. To make the ideal fur texture, you want to layer it. So you just do short little stamps next to each other to make it more convincing. The last texture I'm going to show you how to make is feathers, because feathers are a pain in the butt to draw, sculpt, whatever you want but the stamp feature makes it really nice. So what I'll start out with is a little spine and then draw the little hairs of the feather. I'm calling them hairs and feathers are made out of keratin. So maybe it's like hairs, I don't know. You 
you'd be surprised what a simple crappy design does for your sculptures. Now, if you're not completely happy with the shape, you can push it and pull it around with the liquify tool. We're not going for perfection here. And I want the feather to be more detailed, so I'll duplicate it and then move it down, just so I've doubled the little hairs on the outside of the feather. And then I'll pinch those layers together. Now we'll duplicate that again and add a Gaussian blur, just so it's not as harsh. I think I want to duplicate it again and Gaussian blur that last layer. What we're doing is the Gaussian blur is making a gradient so that it will be a valley instead of a harsh line. Now we'll pinch those three layers together and I'll Gaussian blur this whole thing. Maybe reduce the opacity a smidge. Once again, we'll swing that over to Nomad. Now we have a juicy little feather texture that you can just keep on clicking and repeating. I use textures quite often to elevate my sculptures and every stamp you see is one I've made including this bacon. So every texture you see here, I made from scratch. One of these days I'll finish this little guy. Even as butt fluffs. The butt fluffs are very important. These horns you see here, I layered a lot of textures to get this effect. I have to bake in textures like this because I intend on 3D printing all of these. I don't know a dang thing about texture maps, so don't ask me. How this alpha stamp turned out I'm really proud of. And all I did was make it from scratch and procreate. And I'll show you how I did it. Same gist, I made a shape and then made duplicates of that shape and Gaussian blurred each layer until I had a gradient. But it's the same principle that I showed you. Only difference is that I selected the outside, inverted the selection and filled it in so that the edges were a little sharper. So once again, that's how this alpha stamp turned out. I wanted a nice, clean, crisp, scared beetle, and sculpting it was not an option. Aren't you surprised how easy that was? I really love using alpha stamps. They're my favorite thing ever. When I'm trying to crank in a lot of texture really easily and really fast. I hope this tutorial is very useful to you, and it makes alpha stamps a lot less intimidating. If you have any suggestions of what you want to see next, please uh, comment below and tell me what you want to see. If you like this tutorial, well, like the video. If you really like what I do, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week.